Welcome to this five-part series on strengthening of reinforced concrete beam with CFRP jacketing using Abacus. In the first video, I will talk about creating the geometry using parts module. The series is divided into five parts. In first part, I will talk about creating geometry. Second is about material properties and sections. Third is about assembling those parts. Fourth is about meshing, loading, boundary conditions, contact interactions, and job submission. Finally, fifth and last part is about viewing the results. This is a problem that I'm going to solve today. The details are given in this book. These are the material properties. I will be using SI units in millimeters. As usual, I will be using these nine steps to model the problem. The first part is related to defining the geometry. And in this part, I will create geometry for concrete beam, concrete jacketing, CFRP bars, and steel reinforcement. This entire video series is available on tinyurl.com slash abacus. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. First step is part where we will create geometry. I will solve this example strengthening of the RC beam using CFRP rods and concrete jacketing. This example is taken from this book, Solving Complex Problems for Structures and Bridges Using Abacus Finite Element Package by Farzad Hajezi and Isfahani. This is the example that we want to solve today. It is two meter span and, and 150 by 250 millimeter rectangular section. And the reinforcement details are given two T12 bottom bars and two T8 top bars. There are several typo mistakes in this example, which I have corrected it, and then it will be provided in the link down below. Let us see how we can create this model. FRP jacketing has been applied at the bottom with the help of these anchor boards, and anchor boards are not explicitly modeled here. It is just the concrete jacketing using CFRP bars are attached at the bottom of this beam. Now, this beam has many components. It has reinforced concrete, it has bottom bars, it has top bars, it has uh, links or stirrups, it has CFRP bars, and it has concrete uh, jacketing. So, first, I will start with modeling concrete part. So, let us uh, model concrete part. Its dimensions are 150 millimeter by 250 millimeter. I will start with Abacus standard, double click on parts and say RC beam. It is 3D deformable solid extrusion and approximate size. I'm going to keep the size as probably 1000 because the maximum dimension is 250 millimeter. Click continue. Now here I will start a rectangle and the first corner of rectangle is 0 comma 0 and there's a reason for using 0 comma 0. Later when I'm going to assemble this model in assembly then it will make things a lot easier to place reinforcement. So let us start with 0 comma 0 and the top dimension is horizontal is 150, the vertical is 250. So let's place these dimensions. Once we have done this then we can click on this icon to auto zoom and just to confirm that these dimensions are correct i'm going to use dimension click on dimension 250 and click on the bottom dimension it is 150. once the model is created i will cancel the procedure and click done and the depth of the section because the entire beam is 2000 200 millimeters so i will say 2200 and i will be using si units in millimeters once we have done this then at least one part is created and again there are several typos over here 150 by 250 not 200 and once i have created this section then i'm going to create datum planes at 100 600 1001 100, 1600, and 2100. And there is a reason for that. When we are going to apply four point loading, we will need these points. And I will show you in a diagram in a minute. Because the loading is applied in this way, 100 millimeter is left from the right, and 100 millimeter is left from the left side. This dimension is 500 millimeter, and this is 
500 millimeter and in between it leaves us 1000 millimeter. That is the reason I'm going to be partitioning this so that I can apply four point loading here. So let us create a datum plane offset from principal plane and we have to choose XY plane to create these datum points and then we will partition the section at these points. Click on create datum plane offset from principal plane and then I will choose here XY plane because I want datum plane to be created in X and Y plane which is this plane xy plane and first offset was 100 again next one repeat the process next one is 600 the following one is 1600 and then we have 2100 in this way i'm going to partition this beam at these points this first datum plane is for using the boundary conditions here supports and this is for support as well in between, I have these two datum planes. These are the points where I'm going to apply loading over here. The next job is to partition beam at these positions. So click on partition cell and then partition cell use datum plane and select the datum plane. So I will choose this datum plane and create partition. And similarly, I will choose the section again and I will choose second datum plane create partition then i will choose the part here and then again i will choose this datum plane create partition and again choose this cell and select a datum plane this is the datum plane and say create partition in that way the section has been partitioned at four points to apply four point loading Two points are supports and middle two points are the points where I'm going to apply loading. Click done. The first part is created. And then I will create bottom reinforcement, top reinforcement and stirrup. The bottom and top reinforcement. Again, there is a typo mistake here. The cover to the reinforcement is 30 millimeter from the ends. So it will not be 2104, it will be 2140. Let us create the bottom bar and top bar. Again, I will double click on parts. I will say top dash bar and it will be 3D deformable. This time it's going to be wire and the approximate size is going to be 10,000 because at least it should be four times higher than the size of the section that you're creating. Here I'm going to create 2140 millimeter long bar so click here and then i will choose on wire and simply i will create a line and i will say i will use dimension and say 2140 click here the section has been created click done bar has been created and simply i will copy this bar as bottom bar as well so we will have the same length of top and bottom bar. The only difference is that the bottom bar is T12, which means 12 millimeter die high strength bar, and top bar is T8, which means 8 millimeter die steel bar. So let us copy this over. I will call it as bot bar. My next job is to plot CFRP bar, and CFRP bar is 1900 millimeter long. So simply I will do the same thing. I will copy this bar over and I will say CFRP bar and click OK. Because the CFRP bar is shorter than top and bottom bars, I will simply go away and I will change the dimension here. Click here on edit dimension. Click here and it is 1900. Simply I will apply it and cancel the procedure click done and here i have to regenerate the feature if i don't regenerate the feature then simply it's not going to work regenerate the feature cfrp bar has been created as well now i have to create a stirrup the dimension of a stirrup is 120 by 190 so let us create this stirrup so double click on parts and say links or stirrups i will say links and again, it will be 2D deformable wire and planar. And here I will choose the part size as 1000. 
and simply I will start with rectangle and first point is 0 comma 0 the next point is 120 comma 190 and I'll click this auto fit to fit within the screen and then I will dimension it to double check if whatever I have created it has the right dimensions so click here and put the dimensions 190 click here and dimensions 120 and simply click done to create the part the next job is to create concrete jacketing the dimensions of concrete jacketing are that it is 150 millimeter wide the width is similar to width of concrete beam and depth is 30 millimeter so let us see how we can create concrete jacketing and its depth is going to be a 2000 we will just provide it at the supports we will not extend it beyond the supports double click on parts and say c jacket i will create 3d deformable this time i'm going to create a solid part and extrusion the approximate dimension is thousand click continue and here i will pick rectangle again the first dimension is zero comma zero the second dimension is 150 which is the horizontal one and the vertical dimension is 30. in that way i have created concrete jacketing part now i will dimension it so that i am sure that it has been created properly click here and then again add dimension 30 cancel the procedure and click done the depth of concrete jacketing is 2000 millimeter because i'm just going to provide it inside the supports the part has been created i think i've created all the parts unless if i miss something we are not done yet in the next video i will talk about creating material properties and assigning sections click this screen to come on over